Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. If you received some odd emails from DocuSign this weekend, then you are not alone. DocuSign is a company that simplifies the electronic signing of, electron of legal documents and the emails claim to link to a document that you are asked to sign, but instead of an invoice or similar document that you expect to show, you will receive a virtual document with the usual macro malware. In itself, uh, that uh, would not be so special given that systems like this are certainly often abused and impersonated by phishing campaigns. However, in this case, the email were even more plausible than usual because miscreants actually managed to breach a system off DocuSign and steal customer emails. So the result is that these phishing emails actually arrived in the inboxes of actual DocuSign customers, which of course were accustomed to these emails and then more likely going to click on them. According to DocuSign, only emails were stolen. Of course, DocuSign does deal a lot with confidential documents that people are transmitting via their systems. Last week, I talked about how certain HP laptops that use an audio chip from Connexent lock all keystrokes. Apparently, this was a debug functionality that was left behind in the audio driver, but the effect was that all keystrokes, including usernames, passwords that the user may have entered, were locked in clear text files. HP now released an update to the driver that removes this key logging functionality. Actually, it turns out this was an update to an update. They first released an update on Friday that did remove the functionality. Well, not entirely. You could re-enable it with a simple registry setting. setting. Now they completely removed this capability. But be aware, uh, there are some reports that this is not limited to HP laptops. This is really a function of these Connexent drivers and uh, many other laptops do use the same chipset and possibly similar drivers. Google Chrome by default downloads certain files that it considers safe without prompting the user. That's of course always a little bit a tricky feature, in particular since it's more implemented sort of as a limited whitelist or blacklist. Now, one file type that did turn out to be particularly problematic are Windows Explorer shell command file files or SCF files files. These files were used back in the Windows 98 and later days for desktop shortcuts and essentially what they contain is sort of the name of the program they're representing with this shortcut and also an image file, an icon that's being used to display it. Well, it uh, turns out that when you download a file like this using Google Chrome, it does not change the extension. So even modern versions of Windows do try to parse this SCF file and then display the icon. The problem with the icon is that it may be located on a remote share. So SMB links are being followed here. And uh, with that, a victim can be tricked to connect to a malicious SMB. And be a server. The exploit here, first of all, is that with this connection, the victim would send L NTLM version 2 hashes to this malicious server, who then, of course, could crack these hashes. But in general, of course, uh, this can lead to a wide range of SMB related 
exploits. Two things I think you should do is first of all in Chrome's advanced settings you can turn off this feature so files are not downloaded no matter what the extension is without asking the user. Link files by the way so LNK files which are very similar uh, to these SCF files are not downloaded with the original extension by default but Chrome will add a dot download extension preventing them from being parsed automatically. And then well uh, don't think I have to say this anymore but the other thing you should do is prevent these outbound SMB connections. And then just uh, quickly wanna cry, no real big news here. Apparently there are now some versions out there that do not check the kill switch domain, but uh, overall uh, this particular threat seems to have died down by now. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.